Hello and welcome to Food for Thought and the Country Music Wrap-Up for 2016. These are some of our picks for 2016. Um, before we get into that, I want to go over some of the actual Billboard charts. And I'm going to, you know, this is not just pop. It actually has got a little bit of everything in it. It's just, it's Billboard's top 10. So um, we'll do that first and we'll do Billboard's top album and then we'll go into all of the country stuff because some country artists have made it into these billboard top 10 so i want to i think it's just really cool to be able to say that so anyhow love yourself uh by justin bieber is number one that is the number one track of 2016 the obviously most popular track is a song by justin bieber love yourself the number two is can't stop the feeling and that's another justin but that's justin timberlake what were you gonna say uh, I was just going to say something about Justin having uh, a number two, but. <laughs> uh, that's so funny because then Justin Timberlake has the number two. The number three is The Sounds of Silence by Disturbed. Now, I remember when that came out, you loved that one. It's a very well done cover. Usually I don't like covers of songs that were hits other than when I'm in a bar having a cold one. But I got to tell you, that was probably the best cover of a, of a song that I liked that I actually like. Yeah, they did it really well. There's so much feeling in it that um, can make you cry, actually, listening to it. Number four is I Want to Write You a Song by One Direction. Got anything to say there about One Direction? Nope. Okay, This Town by Niall Horan. Am I saying this right? N-I-A-L-L and then H-O-R-A-N. No clue. T- couldn't tell you I don't follow that no clue. genre I know. of music. And no, but then then we've got number six is Perfect Illusion by Lady Gaga. Nothing about the Gaga? No, I prefer to stay away from people that wear meat. I don't think she's wore any meat in 2016. False Alarm by The Weeknd. I really, I don't listen to that kind of music, so you're wasting your time looking at me on that one. Okay, Setting the World on Fire, which is Kenny Chesney featuring Pink. Well... Pink's good. Ooh, number nine, and that was number eight. Number nine is Cake by the Ocean, and then DNC. That, that sounds that, that sounds more like a, like something. Uh, cake by yeah, the yeah, Ocean. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go have some Cake by the Ocean. Mm-hmm. And number ten is Starboy, the, which is the weekend featuring Daft Punk. Did you get that? The name of the song is Starboy. It's by the Weeknd featuring. Now you know who the Weeknd is. It's that guy that had like that. Tilted hair, it looked like like the Leaning Tower of Pizza hair, Pizza hair. Remember pizza. him? Lean, yeah, Leaning Tower of Pizza. Anyhow, that's the top ten. You know, we had Love Yourself by Justin Bieber, Can't Stop the Feeling by Justin Timberlake, The Sounds of Silence by Disturbed, I Want to Write You a Song by One Direction, This Town by Niall Horan, Perfect Illusion by Lady Gaga, False Alarm the Weekend, Setting the World on Fire, Kenny Chesney featuring Pink. Uh, number nine was Kicked by the Ocean, DNCE, and number ten was Starboy the Weekend featuring. Daft Punk. Anyhow, so we'll move on to our top albums. Oh, and you got to know that uh, Trump's going to have a problem with this. But the number one album of the year on Billboard charts is Hamilton. The you know, and, and that album is by the original Broadway cast. That is the album of the year. It's undisputed. It's the number one Billboard Billboard album of the year, and there's not a damn thing Donald Trump can do about it. Number two is Joanne. By Lady Gaga. Number three is Starboy. <laughs> by The Weeknd. There we go with The Weeknd again. Number four is uh, Black by Dirk Bert- Bentley. That's really cool. I mean, he actually made it onto this. I was pretty impressed by seeing his name there. Black actually is the number four album of the year. Then we've got Blue Neighborhood by uh, Troy Savon. I have no clue who that, who that is. Never number six. Yeah, number six. Yeah, I mean, we should we should actually let our, our listeners know that we primarily listen to country music. So uh, if we don't know who some of these artists is, are, it's because we just don't listen to it. We primarily listen to original country music. Yeah, a lot of songwriter nights. We don't typically go for the top forty stuff. That's true. Okay, I think I said "Blue Neighborhood" by Troy Troy Savon. Then number six is "Tangled Up" by Thomas Rhett. Number seven is Twenty Five" by Adele. Number eight is Purpose by Justin Bieber. Number nine is Last Year Was Complicated by Nick Jonas. And number 10 is Black Star by David Bowie. So David Bowie actually made it into the top 10 albums on Billboard 
uh, after he passed. So he has no idea that he actually was able to secure a spot in the top 10 for uh, for 2016. Anyhow, so we just went over the Billboard uh, top tracks uh, for 2016 as well as the albums for 2016. It's worth repeating just so that we can poke Donald Trump that Hamilton is the number one album of the year for 2016. Woohoo! Okay, so let's move on now. Let's talk about the Grammys. We've got some, I want to send out some Grammy nods out there for some of these really cool Grammy nominations. These artists that uh, are going to be honored, I believe it's in February at the Grammys. Best country solo performance is um, Love Can Go to Hell by Brandy Clark. You go, girl. Uh, Brandy Clark is fabulous. If you don't know who she is, you should. Um, then we've got Vice by Miranda Lambert. To be honest, not one of my favorite songs, but somebody seems to like it. Uh, My Church by Maren Morris. Maren was all over the map this in 2016. The girl came apparently out of nowhere. Now, we all know that artists don't just come out of nowhere, but it seems like she did. And she was all over the place and made some really good music. She's a fabulous songwriter. Then we have um, Church Bells by Carrie Underwood. Blue Ain't Your Color, Keith Urban. Great, great song. Those are the best country solo performance nominations for a Grammy. Um, and another thing I should note too, is that for years we had heard that there weren't enough females in country music. There weren't enough females. Well, this year has been a resurgence for country, for females in country music. And a lot of them, uh, and that resurgence is uh, appearing on all of the, you know, shows that honor people in music or people in country music. We had a lot of artists that came up in, and, uh, you know, Carrie's been there for a while, but like we've got Brandy Clark and then, you know, we've got, um, Marin. So, you know, those are newer artists and there's going to be more that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes as well. Um, best country duo group performance, different for girls. That's, uh, Dirk, that's Dirk Bentley with, um, uh, Ellie King. Then we've got 21 Summer, which is Brothers Osborne. Then we've got Setting the World on Fire, which is Kenny Chesney and Pink. So not only did they make it into the top 10 on Billboard, but they are now up for a Grammy nomination. We also have, um, okay, this one's interesting. We've got Jolene, and uh, what happened is uh, Pen- Pentatonix actually got together with Dolly Parton and they redid and she redid Jolene with them. And it's really, if you haven't seen that on YouTube, you need to get over there and take a listen to that. Then we've got Think of You, which is Chris Young and Cassidy Pope. That's a great song. So we got a nice mix of the past and the present with three collaborations that cross genres. Uh, One of the formats, rising musical duos and two of the formats, top young talents in Pope and, and Young. Fabulous, fabulous songs and uh, collaborations. So best country song, let's see. Best country song that got uh, the NAMI, the Grammy nominations. Ah, the NAMI, the NAMI nominations. <laughs> Who got the Grammy nominations. Oh, hey, leave that in. I mean, like, you know, we're real. Anyhow, best country song. Blue Talk for yourself, I'm imitation. Yeah, you're not real, right? Uh, I know, I wind you up. I wind you up every day. Good, good, good. Uh, best country song, Blue Ain't Your Color. And the uh, and I guess best country song, I guess these nominations are for songwriters because it doesn't say Keith Urban next to Blue Ain't Your Color. It says Clint Lagerberg, Hillary Lindsay, and Stephen Lee Olson. Then we've got Die a Happy Man. And remember, this is for the songwriters. Yay, yay, songwriters, because without the songwriters, there would be no songs, people. There would be no songs. Anyhow, we've got... Uh, Die Happy Man, Sean Douglas, Thomas Rhett, and Joe Spagar. Then we've got Humble and Kind, Lori McKenna. We've got My Church, Marin Morris and Busby. We've got Vice, Miranda Lambert and Shane McNally and Josh Osborne. So, um, as you know, I I don't know if you're aware of this, but Miranda writes a lot with Shane McNally. And then uh, Josh Osborne, I believe, is one of the Osborne brothers. So, you know, she's in real good company there. Anyhow, best country album is Big Day in a Small Town, which is Brandy Clark. So keep in mind now, Brandy has made it and uh, has gotten other nominations. She's got the nomination for best country solo performance. And then, of course, she's got a nomination for best country album with um, Big Day in a Small Town. Now, here's one. Here's one that's going to not shock you, but it's just... It's just so cool that Loretta Lynn, at her age, has got a Grammy nomination for her album, Full Circle. And that's just really cool. 
to, to hear that and see that. Then we've got Maren Moore strikes again with her album Hero. Then we've got A Sailor's Guide to Earth, uh, Sturgill Simpson, and then we've got Ripcord, Keith Urban. And Ripcord's a really, really great CD, and that one's well, well earned. Um, the top 10 country songs of the year are Think of You, Chris Young featuring Cassidy Pope. No, and that's number 10. Number nine is Forever Country, The Various Artists. I don't know if you haven't seen that on YouTube. Uh, what happened was everybody, all the country artists got together and they uh, did a video. And what they did was they combined three different countries or three different songs. It wasn't even just country songs, but they combined three different songs together to make a music video. And it's something that everybody needs to see. If you haven't seen it, Go online, go on YouTube, put in Forever Country, Various Artists, and it'll come up like, you know, 500 times, and you'll be able to see it. Uh, number eight, Nobody to Blame, Chris Stapleton. Um, if you don't know who he is yet, you must be under a rock. But at any rate, look him up because um, he is fabulous. Great, great, phenomenal songwriter, singer-songwriter. Then we've got Vice by Miranda Lambert. Once again, Vice strikes. So like I say, I don't like it, but obviously a lot of people do. Then we've got Peter Pan by Kelsey Ballerini. Peter Pan's a really good song, so uh, I think that that one is quite deserving. And that's not that came in at number six. Number five is Head Over Boots. Head Over Boots, people are saying, was probably the most catchy tune of the year uh, by John Party, and that came in at number five. Then we've got Different for Girls, which is Dirk Bentley featuring um, Ellie King. And again, that one, I believe that one got the billboard, uh, also got a billboard nod. So um, that song's doing quite well. And that collaboration is again Marin Morris strikes with my church, my church, and and if you don't know the song, look that one up as well. Great song. Number two is again, once again, Keith Urban with Blue Ain't Your Color, and uh, I don't need to really, I don't need to pump that song up because it's just so great that you. I'm sure that everybody that's watching this knows that song. And the number one song is Humble and Kind by Tim McGraw. And you know, right now with uh, the state of our country and the division humble and kind is really a song that we all need to pay attention to um listen food for thought has we have our own picks for favorite album for 2016 and um i thought i, I would share some of that with you guys so anyhow my favorite pick for albums for 2016 is kind of something something old and something new it's a blast from the past um, Little River Band, and the reason why I'm including them in this, we talked about Billboard, but then we also talked about um, country music. O almost all of the members of Little River Band live in Nashville, or in, in or around the Nashville area. Several of them are Nashville so uh, songwriters. So I absolutely think that they fall into that, into that class, besides the fact that the music that they do and the music that these guys are currently doing um, could very well fall right into the country genre. So we've got Little River Band, The Hits Revisited. And what's so cool about this album is that you've got nine of the hits. Nine, not none, nine of the hits. And, um, you know, these hits include Help Is On Its Way, Reminiscing, Lady, Lonesome Loser, Cool Change, The Night Owls, Take It Easy On Me, Man On Your Mind, and We Too. And what they did is they threw in two new songs. And both of these new songs are written by band members, um, you know, Rich Herring and um, Wayne Nelson. They co-wrote these two songs with two other people. And one of the songs is You Saved Me. Oh, and Chris Marion. I can't forget Chris. Um, we all, everybody loves Chris. Um, anyhow, and that was not a pun on that, you know, everybody loves Chris. Because everybody just loves Chris. That's, that's kind of an inside band joke, but everybody loves Chris. Um, you Saved Me was written by Rich Herring and Chris Marion. And All the Young Faces was written by Wayne Nelson and... Um, I, I don't want to mispronounce this guy's name, but it looks like Schneidner. And I just have a last name. I don't even have a first name on, on the album. But anyhow, great album. Definitely pick it up. You can get it on, uh, you can download it at iTunes, Amazon. You can purchase it off their website. Definitely check out this album. This is something that you, you absolutely need to have in your car when you're cruising. So that, that's my, for my favorite. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about my biggest disappointment <laughs> and this this absolutely pains me to say this because i was number 52 in his official fan club back in 1992 uh but my biggest disappointment of this year musically was uh thin line by billy ray cyrus 
And um, I just don't know what he was thinking when he did this. He, he was obviously experimenting, you know, with music and he kind of just did it his way. And, you know, if you want to hear something really different than, than this would be, <clears throat> look at this, I can't even talk, <laughs> then this would be something to pick up if you want to hear something uh, totally unexpected. There's a couple cover tunes in here that were okay. Um, but for the most part, this was just very hard to get through. And especially the, like the last track, which is, uh, we, I don't even know. Do you remember, do you remember listening to this as angels protect this house? And it's like featuring Miley. Do you remember that? Do you have anything to say about that? Um, if anybody was around in the sixties, just from just sort of envision sitting around smoking a big one and no, th- no, that would be more like LSD, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, that's kind of what it puts you in the mind of, yeah. Yeah, you know. So I mean, so I do. We have anything good to say about it? Um, they make great coasters. Other than the coasters, I mean, I don't know. It just wasn't. It wasn't easy to get through. And like I say, it pains me to say that his first two albums were pretty good uh, back in the '90s, and. Um, so I, I was kind of excited when I received a copy and then when, you know, I had to review it, I kind of backed off on it because I didn't really want to have to say anything negative about it. But it turned out that it's kind of, it's kind of uh, you know, up there with the worst album of the year. I do want to say that Billy Ray's sitcom that's on CMT, Still the King, is way more entertaining than that album. Uh, Check out his sitcom. It's coming back. He got renewed for another season. It's very entertaining. I I watched it. You know, I thought it kind of looked kind of silly. And I said, well, let me give it a try. And, you know, it grows on you. It's one of those funny things that grows on you. And uh, what are you going to say? It's like a zit. (laughs) You don't like it at first, but it does grow on you. No, I mean, it's it's actually a very funny show. I I have some honorable mentions, and I'm going to get all choked up here for... um, for the year 2016. And um, I'm going to bring up this album by uh, Swamp the Womp. And it has such a sad story attached to it. It was released in 2015, at the end of 2015. And he was just really getting ready to promote it and tour it and, you know, have it do wonderful things for 2016. And instead, in October... He get, fell ill with uh, bronchitis. In December, he fell and, da- and injured his knee badly. And um, that kind of kept him off his knee and not moving around enough. And then he developed pneumonia. Um, bottom line is that Gig Michaels, the lead singer of Swamp to Womp, who had one of the most unusual and uh, phenomenally contagious voices passed away on January 3rd, 2016. He was actually the first celebrity or first music death of 2016. And because he wasn't known nationally, a lot of people don't know that, but people should know it. People should listen, get online, um, you know, Google Swamp to Womp and listen to some of this music. You might want to tell them how to spell Swamp to Womp so they're not... Well, Swamp to Womp is S W A M P, and then a space uh, da D A, and then Womp W A M P. Uh, this is not Cajun music; it's like Southern rock. It's Southern rock, and it's it's just Southern rock, country rock, and it's so phenomenally good. And Gig was so phenomenally good. And um, you know, I'm filming this the day before the first anniversary of his passing, and um, it makes me very sad. I, I you know, he's just so good. Anyhow, check them out on YouTube. I believe that the albums can still be purchased. And, um, you know, this is, some, this is something everybody should have in the collection. You just, you're going to love it. Some other honorable mes- mentions that we have here is uh, John McEwen, and which is made in Brooklyn. Uh, this is another CD people should check out. There's several happy surprises on this album, including musical contributions by actor Steve Martin and then, um, and then John Carter Cash, who is the son of Johnny Cash and and June Carter. He also uh, participated in and lent some of his musical talents in this album. This thing's really cool. Everybody should check out this album. And we've got, for for the bluegrass lovers, we've got 
I'm not sure if they pronounce their name Newtown or Newton, but we've got Hall and Row by Newtown or Newton, and this is some really, really great bluegrass music. So if you want, if you need, you know, and want some new bluegrass in your life, this is an album you need to check out. Um, you can go to their website, which I'm sure is www Newtown, which is N E W T, like like it sounds, New Town, like a new in town. N E W T O W N dot com, and check them out. And last but not least, we've got a uh, trio of sisters. These are some newcomers to country music. Uh, the name is Southern Halo, and they are adorable sisters who make some really good country music. Um, got totally supportive parents, and uh, they have a really nice package, the way they had this put together. So you've got, like, the liner notes. It opens up. You know, you pop the CD off, and you can see... A picture of the girls, and they're, they're actually uh, three very uh, beautiful girls. I guess they're teenagers. I believe they're teenagers, um, and they make some really great music. So if you want to check out something new, go to Southern Halo, and that's S-O-U-T-H-E-R-N-H-A-L-O.com, and order their CD. You check it out. Check them out online on YouTube. They have videos. Um, that's really about it for our wrap-up for 2016. We hope you have a very nice uh, January, and we will be back sometime, maybe sometime about the halfway point, uh, halfway through 2017. We'll come back and see what's going on in the world of country music. Okay, so thank you for tuning in to Food for Thought, and see you soon.